Hi, my name is Julia Silge, and I'm a data science and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we are going to do a short and sweet walkthrough of how, um, uh, how to explore a model after you have trained it using the augment um, function, which is um, originally came from Broom, and uh, you can use it with tidy models, uh, models trained with um, um, uh, tidy models to be able to uh, say, hey, I've got some uh, some some variables here. I want to understand how is the model um, uh, like how is the model behaving given a certain set of variables. We're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set about um, uh, inequality um, in student debt. So uh, let's get started. Okay, let's explore this data on um, student debt and inequality in the United States. So this should be a um, a little bit of a of a quick video. Let's get the um, let's see. I think I've got this URL pasted here. So there's a lot of different data sets in. Um, in this week's Tidy Tuesday, the one that caught my eye is the one about student debt. And you can see this is this is quite a small data set. Let's just make a quick um, a graph to um, to explore it here. So the this is uh, shows us um, over the last uh, couple decades. Um, let's say we can put year on the x axis. Um, uh, some information about uh, student loans. For example, the percent of families that have student loan debt over time, and we have information about how that varies by race. There's three race um, and ethnicity categories in this data set. So we can um, we can put some points on here. So we've got we've got that information here, and let's we can we can. Um, uh, you know, change the labels here. We can tell that's a year at the bottom. We don't really need that. So let's clarify this. This is percent of families with student loan loan debt. And then we can also take, um, we can say color equals null there. So let's, uh, let's do this. So this is, um, a bit of a, a plot here and we can see it's going up right like this is this um, you know this impact of the rising cost of um, of college uh, you know a chain there's a lot of things that have contributed to this right like this really dramatic um, you know from 20 percent to you know over 40 percent here but we can see also that there is um, differences there by um, by race so let's do that let's um so let's make these plots big and then let's go in here and let's put a line on top of those. So let's say, um, let's just make it a straight line and let's turn off the, the errors on that. The, the, there. Okay, so um, we can see that um, over time, um, for all groups, the, um, the percent of family with student loan debt, loan debt has gone up, but it has gone up uh, in a, for, at, at a different rate for these different families. So um, the percent of black families um, is the steepest. So the inequality, uh, it was, um, so this, this is a way in which we see this inequality, that the rate of change is different for um, these different families. So we have, you know, low rates of, um, of the percent of families with student loan debt um, among Hispanic families, white families are in the middle, and black families have the highest rates. And also it's increasing the fastest. So that's like, um, if student loan debt is a problem, then it is um, getting worse and not better. So we can um, uh, see this in this exploratory data analysis. And so what I want to do is do um, a, a, a pretty straightforward model and then use this as a way to talk about how we can build a model and then, um, and then explore it afterwards. So this, this model is going to be, you know, pretty dead simple. Like, like you can't do something much more simple than this, but it is a, um, 
uh, we're going to sh show how we can explore it afterwards. So sh hopefully short and sweet here. So let's take, let's, we're going to load tidy models and then we're going to talk about how to build a model with tidy models. So in tidy models, we have this idea of, um, when we have this idea of a model, we start with a, a model specification and we can do things like, um, you know, logistic regression, if we're training a classification model, um, a random um, forest model. And these models all are not yet ready to train because we haven't really said much yet about what we're going to do. So we're going to use a linear model here. And there's a couple of different things. So we, we there's basically f um, th several parts, pieces that you put together to get your model and we can pipe them together here. So the th next thing that we need to do here is we need to set an engine. So in, um, in Parsnip, uh, there's a couple of different engines that are available for linear regression. We're actually just going to use like the pretty um, straightforward one. If we look at the, the uh, documentation for linear regression, we can see that we've got um, We've got options like um, Glimnet, like Stan for Bayesian modeling, Spark, and Keras. We are, we're going to just stick with this um, good old ordinary least squares. So let's call this LM spec. So this is our, this is our specification of a model. So it's ready, but we have not done anything with it yet. So let's, um, Let's get this ready now and fit it. So if we wanted to fit a Bayesian model, we would just change this to Stan, Stan like that. But we are going to use um, just a linear model. And so now what we can do now that we have that um, spec is we can, um, you know, we could fit it to resamples of those 30 points. Um, but let's here, let's just fit it. So we're going to fit it um, and we could fit it using a recipe. But you know what? We are just, you know, we've got this data that we have here. We are just going to fit it with a formula. So these, um, it looks it like I'm not, I'm feeling I'm pretty OK with those straight lines through those 30 points. So let's um, let's take a let's, you know, just not deal with a recipe, but let's, um, uh, let me remind myself what these, um, what these, uh, these are called the, okay. So we're going to predict loan debt percentage, and we are going to predict it with an interaction of year, um, interacting with race like this. And our data is this student debt data. So what this means is we're saying, oh, um, I think that the percentage of families with, um, with student loan debt depends on race, um, but that the it, it all that the, the how, how it is changing, or let me say it the other way, it depends on year. I, you know, I think it's getting higher with year, but I think that the rate at which it's getting higher with year is different for different races. Or I would like to fit a model and see whether that's true or not. Um, so, so that's what our interaction term is, is saying, that the, um, I think that the, the rates here can be, um, can be different. So let's uh, call this LM fit or we could call this student debt fit or whatever we like and um, put this here like so. So now we've got our, our result here. So this is a parsnip model fit object, which has got inside of it a, um, an LM uh, fit object. So we can um, now, so we can tidy this if we would like to get out the, um, uh, the results into a data frame and we'd like to, you know, we can filter or make a plot with this, but I'll be honest when I'm dealing with, um, interaction terms, um, it's, it's hard to kind of look at this and say something about it. Like, I'm like, Oh, what does it mean? That, you know, that, uh, some of these are big and some of these are negative, like which direction goes which, I don't really know what that means. And so the really best way, I think, to do something with this is to um, not look at the coefficients directly and try to intuit something from them, 
but instead to explore the model results using, you know, um, uh, you know, simulated data, make visualizations, make tables um, to be able to tell you what you're doing. So let's do that. So let's make some new points. So this isn't the data that we started with, that we trained with. Um, so we can use crossing from tidy R. So let's make um, a vector of our race values. So we had um, black families, Hispanic, and white. And then we can say the years that we want. So uh, 1990 to 2020. So if I do this, I'm going to end up with a data frame of new points. So this is actually way more data than I trained this on here. And now what I can do is I can use, um, I can use augment. So I'm going to have an augment of a, of a model fit here so I can augment data that I have with predictions. So augment will add columns for predictions to the given data. So um, so f I have a regression model here so a prediction a pr dot pred column is added um, which is exactly what I want. So let's do that. So I can I'm gonna say augment my my model LM fit with my new points like so. And so now I have what is the predicted percent of families um, uh, with that race in that year that um, have that uh, that that have student loan debt. Uh, so that's in um, a data frame. And now I can actually just go back up here and um, uh, plot this instead of um, geom points. I'm just going to do a geom. Geom line. Let's make it um, a little bit transparent like that. And uh, yeah, instead of, so now it's called dot pred because it's a predicted value like so. And we've got this. So, so yeah, so we did it. So now we're able to say this is what my model is saying. So my, um, you know, and it, maybe this isn't super shocking, right? Given that um, uh, we we looked at the data, but the, but we, you know, but we're looking at something new now. We're looking at I fit model a model to data, and now I'm looking at what is the model doing? What is the model saying? And so taking an approach like this lets us explore what our model output is doing. Um, and when I am dealing with um, something, you know, like with interaction terms or, um, uh, you know, maybe models that don't have, um, you know, maybe, maybe not linear models, right? Like where you, um, where, where you have coefficients that you can look at so directly and try to understand them. This is a great option to be able to uh, understand, you know, um, maybe with, maybe you have more predictors. You can say like uh, along some, some uh, uh, variables, how is your model behaving? So be, so augment is here, ready to use, ready for you to be able to understand um, how your model and d dig into and understand how your model is performing and um, uh, be sure to give it a go. All right, we did it. A lot of times when we train models, the output that we get from the model doesn't directly give us a lot of insight into, um, into you know, like how is the model going to behave. Um, we can use augment in the way that we did in this video to um, to say, hey, here, you know, here are um, uh, a bunch of uh, possible values for the kind of inputs that I have. The way we did with race and year, and then use augment to say, um, what will the predictions be? And then we can explore those using visualization and get a better idea. So um, I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.